can be only one podcast and may it be the prince of the universe. Hi folks, I'm Matt and I'm by myself. This is our nerd nerd news update that Bruce and I usually do. Um, he couldn't make it, <clears throat> so I asked Wes for a an awkward time this this past week and he couldn't make it either. So it's just going to be me, and which is fine because I, Wes, I don't think has seen all these these things, <clears throat> but uh, I know Bruce had or seen most of them. We we're going to talk about them. So, and then I'm going to talk about a book review now that he's not here. <laughs> and maybe another TV series, too. Who knows? I don't know how much time I'll have. But uh, I'm pretty sure I'll go the full 30 here. I uh, wanted to talk about Walking Dead. On Saturday morning, Sam of Lange, uh, we talked about five, top five TV shows that went on too long. And one of mine was Walking Dead. Walking Dead was good until the Here Comes Negan season. I think it was season six. I can't recall. But it was... It was where they teased Negan the entire season, and he was only there for the last five minutes of the finale. It was crap, and it was garbage. And that's when I told my wife, I said, it's going. I mean, about halfway into it, we are Negan. We are Negan. Negan's coming. Negan's coming. About halfway into the season, I realized they're never going to show him. They didn't show him at the midway finale. I mean, about as far as they could have let that go was... <clears throat> about mid-season, and then anything past that, it just drug, and that's when I had a bad feeling, and then when he finally showed up the last five minutes, not even the last episode, just the last five minutes, I was like, okay, I got gotcha. you, garbage now, and it's been downhill ever since. Not the worst, but it's been downhill and been going, circling the drain. This past, what, three-part season 10 or whatever, that's really season 13 at this point, season has been garbage, boring garbage. Nothing has happened. There are so many characters now, they don't have time to show everyone. They've really diluted their product. They diluted the characters. A lot of them you don't care about anymore. And the finale came out, and what a stinker. What a stinker. I mean, they defeated another governor, but a weaker one had a weaker ending, too. And I guess everything's whoop de doo now. No, there's no closure. There's no closure on anything, because now it's spinoff city. So here comes Negan and Maggie in New York City. Yay! Whatever it's called, Walking Dead, Dead City. Um, and then Daryl gets on a motorbike, and he's going on his mission, his his mission on his own or whatever. And I, Is it still finding Rick or whatnot? We don't know. We don't care. He drives off on his motorcycle. And coming out soon, Daryl Dixon, spinoff number two. And then spinoff number three, uh, I heard... They filmed last minute just to get some hype up for it, but it's the Michonne, uh, uh, Andrew Lincoln, you know, uh, Rick, I mean, uh, Rick and Michonne uh, spinoff. And I'm not interested in it. Where Michonne looks like a, like a catcher, like a 1900, uh, uh, a catcher from the 1900s of baseball mixed with a samurai, which does not seem cool or interesting. And then Rick, who is escaping from the helicopter that caught him the first time, that brought him to where the first time, and nothing makes sense. Nothing makes sense. And the thing is, they just want you to watch their spinoffs. Well, guess what? I'm not. I'm done. I'm done. I didn't watch. I tried twice to watch Fear the Walking Dead. Uh, My wife gave up after season one. I pushed on to season two, said, oh, this is crap. Then picked it up again for season three, and it was still crap. <clears throat> during the pandemic, I didn't have anything to watch in 2020. I said, you know what? I'll pick up Fear the Walking Dead. Let me give it a third shot or what? And it was terrible. It was terrible. So couldn't even finish that. Uh, Walking Dead, A New World or whatever it's called. Never even bothered watching it because at that point, Walking Dead, the main product, was just junk. And now with zero closure at a series, and it's to be honest, the season finale, I called it. I told my wife, they're going to kill off someone we don't care about, which they did. Then they're going to kill off a character that we do. But I was wrong on that. It's a character that's been around for a while, but Rosita hasn't been around. I mean, hasn't really been a part of any main storylines. Any. She's just, you know her because she she pops up every, what, six to eight episodes? She may be in one, talking for a minute, then gone. But because she's been a part of the series for so long, I guess they thought, yeah, that's the one we feel safest about killing off. Because we don't know what to do with her. Because we haven't known what to do with her for the past four seasons. So let's just kill her off. She's an old school character. She's been around for a while. You know, they, you know, heaven forbid. They, I mean, Daryl would be ballsy, but you already knew he was getting his own spinoff. 
So Carol, you know, Carol, one of the original cast members, would have been nice if she'd have died at the end. You know, someone big had to die. Maggie. Oh, no, she's getting her own spinoff. And we, we love Carol, so we can't kill off Carol. Okay, so you did nothing. I mean, there's no, really not a good climax, really not a, any closure to any of the storylines because they want you to, they want to string you along because that's all AMC has now is Walking Dead, I guess. And they just want to pump that turkey until it's dead. And in my opinion, the, the whole series is dead. I will not be watching. I even asked my wife this. I said, hey, so I told her, I said, she, lo- she used to love Negan back in the day. She loved Daryl and she loves Rick, you know, so they're each getting their own spinoff shows. She is not interested in either of them. So w- thankfully, we're all, I'm off the hook. We won't be watching those. Will I return to them someday if they all go one season of six episodes each? Maybe. I don't know. But I have no desire to go back. I'm just done. <clears throat> it feels like I've been locked in a cage. Uh, you know, well, I, I was at a party, but they locked the doors, and I wanted out like four or five years ago. You know, I didn't want to be a part of the party anymore. So now the doors are finally open. They're saying, hey, we're going to clean up and make it better. So come back next time. No, thanks. No, thanks. I'm good. I'm good, Walking Dead. Uh, I will tell you this. Anyone who is a Walking Dead fan, read the comic books. Comic books are really good. I would say the comic book is extremely better. I mean, so much better. It doesn't deal with all the crap characters that we get in the last three or four seasons. Um, it, it, It has good story building, good character arcs. Uh, the ending does end at that place they're at in season 10, but it's so much better because Rick is there, Michonne is there. Um, there's a big death in the end. I'm not going to spoil the comp book, but a huge death in the end. I mean, and, and it gives you closure. It gives you closure and kind of wraps up the storyline. And I'll be honest, I'm willing to read it again. Um, I will never watch The Walking Dead again, ever. I will never watch the TV show again. But I will read those comic books again. This comic book storyline is just better by all, by all means and purposes. So, I mean, it, and by the way, if you're thinking, oh, geez, those are expensive to get, right? No, you go to the library. I'm sure they've got all the trades or they can order them now. So, if you're one and done, go get comic books and <clears throat> shoot ebooks and regular novels. You can get all that through your library these days if you just want to read it once and be done with it. That's why I suggested to some friends of mine the other night when they were talking about comic books. I keep suggesting Bone. They keep saying, yeah, you keep saying, you keep telling us that, and just wait till they actually read it. Then they're going to be like, oh my gosh, why didn't we read this sooner? Because it's excellent. But uh, Walking Dead is a good one. Like I said, my missus, is, is, she's a, she is a Hallmark Christmas movie gal. She Her favorite show is, you know, what, The Golden Girls or whatnot on TV, but she loves some Walking Dead comic. In fact, those are her Walking Dead comic books. She bought, I know that she has the big hardback collections, the big ones. They only made like six of them. They collect huge omnibus copies of them. I think she bought the first three or four. And then <clears throat> through Christmases and birthdays, I bought her the other ones um, to finish off her collection. But they're technically hers, really. So it's, it's, and it's a really nice collection. So it's definitely worth getting. But the Walking Dead TV show... I mean, I, I just I was thinking there's no way because I know the spinoffs they have. Daryl would have been the biggest kill they could have made, but you knew they weren't going to do it. So I said, well, maybe they'll do Carol, and I'll have to give them, I'll have to show them some respect and give them a nod for that. Nope, the win easy way out and go with Rosie, which was even dumb because I, I guess I'm spoiling the final episode here. But she falls into a, a horde of zombies and then jumps back out and escapes. And I'm thinking that is. It's totally impractical. No one has ever done that in any episode of Walking Dead. But we find out she didn't escape scot-free. One of them did bite her. So I I don't know why she didn't tell him that and have him chop off her arm or wherever it bit her. Maybe it bit her on the shoulder. I don't know. Um, I honestly wasn't paying attention. I was kind of in and out, kind of drifting, kind of looking at email or something else. I was bored through the series finale of Walking Dead. Uh, both my wife, my wife fell asleep. She fell asleep through it because it just did was not holding her interest, and neither one of us cared. We did not care at that point. So other than that, that that was a big stinker. That's a big awful awful show. I would never suggest someone watch the TV show either. I wouldn't say, hey, watch the first six seasons and then stop there. I don't know. Does anyone ever suggest a TV show to watch half of it and then stop before it gets real bad? I don't know. That kind of be a good idea too. Now that I think about it. 
yeah, just watch season one of Battlestar Galactica. Then don't watch the others. You're going to want to because season one is so good. And you can watch season two, and that's good. That's decent. But don't watch any more. Trust me, it gets way worse. It's like the people who told me, Westerworld's the best thing in the world. That was season one. I said, let me wait till the series goes on. No one's talking about it. Same thing with The Witcher. People were going crazy about The Witcher, but now I don't hear anyone telling me to go see The Witcher anymore. Because, you know, you can come up with a good season, but if you can't tell us overall story arc and finish your TV show on a high point, I mean, this is the day and age where we expect a lot more of a TV show. So if you can't, you know, deliver with a good ending and good story arc through many seasons, your, your, your goose is cooked. Like I said, I love Cobra Kai, but I have to admit, they have flip-flopped three times from bad guy to good guy, back to bad guy, or good guy to bad guy, back to good guy, and that's getting a little old. You can only do it so many times. I think they realized that in this past season because they kind of left it all alone, but still, I wouldn't suggest anyone watch Walking Dead, even if it's the first few seasons, which I do think were really good. The season leading up to the Negan stuff was, I, I think, pretty solid. I was really enjoying it, and my wife and I were watching every episode, and it was like, put your phones down and watch the screen at every moment. You know, Even watch Talking Dead afterwards, you know, can, and break down the episode, and then talk about Talking Dead and The Walking Dead after all of them are gone. But those days are so, so over for us. Um, gone are the days where we care about Walking Dead. And that's kind of funny because through my wife's marriage, we were very early wed when walking dead came on and i remember watching this at bruce's old house too but way 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 back in the day 13 years ago or however long it's been now since it's been running and uh so we started watching it. then my wife did not want to watch anything with yucky zombies in it and zombies weren't big back then walking dead made zombies cool again and my wife did not want to watch it and she was, ugh, she, she liked the characters, but she hated when the zombies came. She hated that part. And then when season two came, I remember they had a few episodes where they're on Herschel's farm and there were no zombies. And she goes, okay, you know what? I kind of wish there were more zombies. I was like, oh, you're missing zombies now. We were laughing about it. I always saw this at uh, uh, Benjamin, my co host of Saturday Morning Sam Flange, uh, Kim and her husband, or her first husband. Uh, they used to have Walking Dead parties, and we'd go over there and watch it. It used to be a thing you'd watch with your friends and talk about with everyone. And then to what it is now, season 10, you're asking, who watches this anymore? That's the question you're asking around the work office. And the answer is, no one. Or they say, yeah, I watched that, but I just got too busy. I got too many shows and had to drop one. And of course it's going to be Walking Dead. Why would you keep watching Walking Dead? Sucks now. Anyway, though, done talking, wasting my time talking about the Walking Dead. Next thing I want to talk about, two things I want to talk about. First off, uh, and Bruce and I talked about this, I said maybe we should make it a nerd news, but it was the uh, Gal Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. Now, we did Werewolf by Night, and I was very positive after watching it, we could talk about it for an entire episode, because I was just oh, thrilled with how that was. With Guardians of the Galaxy um, holiday special, it's fun. But Bruce and I agreed we could probably only talk about it for five minutes tops because there really isn't that much to say. I mean, yeah, the gang is back, mainly Drax and little girl with the antennas on her head. I don't know anymore. Um, you know, they capture Kevin Bacon for Star-Lord for his birthday or no, for Christmas, excuse me. And Kevin Bacon's funny in it, of course. I'm, I'm kind of uh, sad because they're mentioning Footloose and I can't remember another really popular film he was in, but I thought they were going to mention Tremors, because Tremors has to deal with aliens. And I thought Drax was going to say, I killed one of those worms, like pretending the worms were real. You know, he goes, well, guys, they were all fake. Wait, the worms didn't invade your planet? I think that was a perfect example to make a great joke there. And Tremors is one of his uh, famous, Kevin Bacon's famous films, but they didn't mention that one. It, had been, it was ripe for comedy gold, and so that was a swing and a miss for me. Um, overall, it's all right. The raccoon comes in at the beginning and the end. Groot is at the beginning and the end, too, I want to say. Star-Lord, beginning. So it looks like most of the cast, they filmed one day and then kept Drax and, you know, Antenna Lady, the only guardian, I guess. I don't know her name on. But uh, Gamora is the green girl. I know that, so I can't, can't remember what her name is. E either way, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what her name is. The fact is... You know, they go on this little adventure. They're kind of funny. They get drunk at the bar, I guess. That's supposed to be funny. It seemed a little forced humor because nothing really weird happened. 
they just were drunk on top of each other for a while, you know, leaning on each other until they got the map to the stars and whatnot. Uh, the Kevin Bacon stuff was kind of funny. <clears throat> like I said, I enjoyed it. And then, you know, they did they did some music to pad the time, the runtime on it. This one, where Werewolf by Night, 40 minutes went by fast, and I didn't even mind it. Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special <clears throat> kind of drug a little bit. I mean, it was 40 minutes long. I would have cut it to 35, 30. I would have cut it to 35, 35 minutes for sure. And if you want to do some hard cuts, 30. You know, but other than that, <clears throat> I mean, it's okay for people to be like, well, Guardians of the Galaxy, but here's the honest truth, folks. I've only watched each Marvel movie once. I have no, well, besides Spider Man, which I thought was excellent, the third Spider Man, No Way Home. <clears throat> but uh, other than that, I'm not re-watching any of the other Marvel movies. And I enjoyed Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2. And this feels like it's so long. It takes place so long after their last movie. I mean, sure, they guest starred in Thor and uh, Avengers and stuff. But it just feels so long since we've just dealt with the movie surrounding just them. <clears throat> Everything felt out of touch. And so I wasn't really feeling it, uh, to say. And then at the end, I guess I won't spoil it. There's a little twist they, you know, Star Lord finds out some great news, and that's his great that greatest Christmas present ever. And I, well, shoot, I am doing spoilers. Never mind. I, I'm doing spoil. I'm spoiling this. So if you haven't seen it, s- skip a minute or something. I don't know. <clears throat> um, but Star Lord and Antenna Girl are brother sister. I don't know how that works. It was supposed to be a big revelation. I'm sure every geeky Marvel fan was going, "OMG!" But I was just going, "Okay." That's it. That's fine. The little whatever, the little teaser, the little stinger at the end was, nah. You know, other than that, it was uh, not not as good. Not as good as Werewolf by Night. Werewolf by Night was pretty was pretty solid. I enjoyed that one. This one was like, eh, it's nice. I mean, yeah, it belongs on Disney Plus. Forty minutes. If you like Marvel, go ahead. You're gonna love it. Like I said, there were some moments where I laughed. I laughed during some of this too, but overall, I thought, meh, it was okay. It was okay. Um, just get to get Gardens of the Galaxy 3, you know, is what I want to see. All right, so the next one, and I didn't even realize this was a TV show until just a few weeks ago, but I am Groot. It's, uh, it, you, and, and these are easy to watch. They're like two minutes long, six episodes. So I think the whole thing will take maybe 14 minutes, you know, 15 minutes to watch. And so I like when it's short, straight, and to the point. Uh, I guess it was made for kids. It's little baby Groot and all his little mini adventures. And I'll be honest, I liked them. I like it because it's only two minutes long, too. (laughs) I was thinking, dang, if this thing was like 10 or 15 minutes long, I would not like these as much. But because they're short, sweet, and to the point, you can watch them really fast, get some good laughs. I'm sure they were for kids now that I think about it. Um, I want to say in the last episode, they get Bradley Cooper to come in And they actually, because they didn't pay anyone to do anything. They just paid the animators to make some shorts. But Bradley came in and said one or two lines or whatever at the end of the last episode, which which may have been like three or four minutes long or something, um, the finale for I Am Groot. Something I'm sure a bunch of animators got together and thought, hey, wouldn't it be funny since Groot is so cute and too? And this came out over the summer. This came out like in August. I never realized it. Um, and yeah, so I watched them and they were fine. I can't remember how I found out about them, but, um, so no, someone, I think maybe Bruce had asked me cause we were talking about the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday edition. He's like, yeah, yeah. I said, man, there hasn't been anything Guardians of the Galaxy since he went, I am Groot. I went, what is that? He went, that's the little show. He said, the kids love it. It's fun. I was like, oh, okay. We we're going to add that to our nerd, nerd news here, but there's really not much we could say, except I love it when he accidentally steps on the little pea, uh, animals. You know, the little small little pea pebble animals and destroys them all. Or you think they end up being alive because that's what tells me it's a kid's show because no one really dies or gets uh, seriously hurt in in the show. But uh, other than that, though, it's, you know, it's cute. It's fun. If you have kids, watch it with them. It's like those Marvel shorts that I think are fun, too. Uh, this is this is kind of in line with the Marvel one shot. That's what's called the Marvel one shots, which I did a whole podcast on almost this time last year. Uh, but this time, got to watch. I am Groot, and I can recommend it. I guess I get. I, and the funny thing was, uh, I was watching. I told my wife about it, and I turned on the first one, and she got on her phone. And then, as uh, toward like the end, toward the fifth or sixth one, the last one, she got up and walked out. She had zero interest. 
<laughs> her love for Marvel, I, I find, is waning, which is funny because she's the one that got me to watch WandaVision. She wanted to watch WandaVision. And then I can't remember where it was. Which show? Oh, well, Falcon Winter Soldier hurt her a little bit. Loki, she watched with me. I can't remember. She was watching Hawkeye. On one of them, she just kind of gave up. She gave up and just stopped. She stopped caring about it. So now, oh, the Black Widow movie. Maybe that was it. But anyway, so the rest of them haven't been as good, I guess. So she's kind of fading out of Marvel. So even someone as cute as Groot could not hold her attention. Oh, well. Um, so lastly here, uh, for the last 10 minutes, and I plan this out just right, I guess. I want to talk about, I've read the Dune books. Dune, Duke of Caledon, uh, Duke of Caledon trilogy. I believe it's how it's pronounced. Uh, these came out, the first book came out the same year or about the same time the movie came out. They were just Brian Herbert, the son of Frank Herbert, and Kevin J. Anderson, one of my favorite authors, have been writing novels for years, but now that the movie's coming out, they want to get themselves in the spotlight. So they release a book. This is smart. They release a book that is a prequel that leads up to the events of Dune. You know, and they're smart because when you're reading this Dune trilogy, it automatically starts tying in everything else that's happened in their other books. So if you're reading this going, wait, what? What assassination attempt? Was that? What, what, wait, wait, the, his father did what? What one time? Where was that about? And so, of course, you are encouraged to read their other books. So, smart move. Now, I will say this. Kevin J. Anderson is one of my favorite authors. So, obviously, I love this. I love these books. I've loved them for years. Uh, I was I was a little skeptical on the Duke of Caladan trilogy when I opened up book one because I thought, what could they tell? I mean, I think the early, the latest or the earliest we'd had from this, like before Dune, was like 10 years before Dune or something. And so I didn't feel like we were going to get any more storyline. You know, there's nothing. And sadly, I mean, Kevin Janerson does write silly tropes that, you know, Paul, no, not Paul, Gurney gets kidnapped by the Har Harkonnens. What will happen to them? Will he? Ki will they kill him? Well, no, they can't because he's going to be in the movie. You know, so these are all movie characters, and you're putting them in harm's way. Like, oh no, the planet that Jessica was on blew up, but you know she wasn't on the planet then because she's in the movie. I mean, if you were to take characters you in you created for the books only and put them in desperate situations, then there'd be a little bit more weight to that character because we would know, we, I mean, we wouldn't know their fate. They're not mentioned in the new movie, so were they just not shown, or did they die? That's much better than saying, uh-oh, an assassin, this is all stuff that happened in the trilogy, an assassin is out to kill Paul Atreides. He's about to attack him. What's going to happen? Who's going to win? Hey, this guy is a failed swords, swordsman of Gins. He didn't pass the... He didn't pass it all, but he trained himself the rest of the way, and they didn't pass him because he was just too good, he thought. He he broke some of the rules. So he was a good swordsman. But you know Paul's going to come out on top. Why? Because he's in the freaking movie. So all of these things, the dangers that they pose, the threats, you're kind of like, no, oh, well, who cares? You know, I, I just want to know how they're going to get out of this one. You know, Gurney is sentenced to die. That no one knows the Harkonnens have him. How will who how will they ever save him if they don't even know where he is or that he has been kidnapped? Well, you know it's going to happen. Doesn't matter the what and when because we know it's going to happen eventually because he's in the movie. So I kind of felt that kind of stuff was done cheaply. But other than that, the books are great. <laughs> this, 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 I gave my small complaint and complained about it for like two minutes here, but. Overall, the book series is interesting because here's the thing. I love these characters. I love this world. And by chapter two, it had me hooked. My good friend Spencer Crilly, uh, I, I, I've been talking to him about this because he's going to slowly get into reading the Doom books because he got kind of inspired by me. I think he got inspired by me talking about him. Spencer, if I'm misquoting you, please let me know. But uh, he, I, I told him they were great. And reading the Duke of Caledon trilogy, I called. I said, hey, on chapter two, I was already saying, you know what? I don't care if you don't have anything new to show me. I love reading about these characters. I like reading about Fering, uh, Fereg, the uh, 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 ambassador or right-hand man of uh, Emperor, the Emperor Shaddam. And I love the Emperor Shaddam Farig discussions that they have too. Good stuff. Baron Har Harkonnen is stirring up trouble. He gets uh, his the beast, Rabin, 
and Fayed to have a competition on who can hurt the House of Treaties more. Uh, Fayed comes up with that failed swordsman assassin to go kill either Lady Jessica or Paul to give the, the, the Duke of Atreides grief. And, of course, the, the guy is such an idiot. He kills the wrong. He kills someone wanting to be the new Lady of Caladan, but she's not Jessica. But since he doesn't know who Jessica is, he thinks, ah, that's the Duke's you know, concubine. So he kills her. And he comes back triumphant. And Fayette goes, no, you idiot. That's not her. That's someone who wanted to be her. Go back and kill the real one. But they think Lady Jessica is dead because, of course, again, the planet got... It didn't blow up. It just got... Uh, everyone on the planet got annihilated. So they think she did, too. So now he's on a mission to go kill Paul. But in the third book, which is where it ends... That, that part ends in the second book. So in the third book, I kept waiting for him. 300 pages later, they decide to finally start mentioning him. It's like, what, did he... Did he, you know, what did he took a long time in a spaceship to get there? I guess, um, going at super slow speeds. I don't know where he was for the most. It's almost like Kevin Janderson and Brian Herbert are like, well, we want to save this battle to the end, but we really don't have anything for him to do in the meantime. So we'll just save off it, and hopefully the fans will forget about him, and then we'll introduce him, you know, in the third act that he's still out there hunting Paul. Yeah, but what's taking him so long? Uh, he doesn't have a masterful plan, too. He just approaches him, to, well, with Duncan, uh, Duncan Idaho, approaches him and challenges him to a match, or doesn't challenge him, tries to kill him. Uh, but I, I may sound like I'm complaining about it, but I, I love Duke Leto, uh, getting to read about him, getting to read about Jessica and the Benny Gesserit was okay. It was good, kind of good at parts, kind of boring at some. Uh, there were some other, uh, witches, that were very interesting to read about. Um, an older uh, mother, Benny Jesuit, uh, who is a she. They call her the uh, what mind slayer or mind flayer, and she can get in your mind and make you crazy and make you kill yourself. And <clears throat> she does that just to be mean, because they're kind of holding her hostage. They're they're not allowing her to die. They're feeding her tons of spice to keep her alive because they need to get information from her. Well, now she's become bitter because they won't let her pass on. So when she can, she'll break free, break free with her mind and kill, get one of the Bene Gesserit to keep slamming their head against a rock, uh, you know, until they split it open and then keep bashing their head until they're unconscious. Or, you know, make one just say one sentence over and over and over again. That's all they'll ever say now. They're in hysterics because that's the only sentence they can ever say. And does horrific things to them. And that's really cool. Uh, the book series as a whole, like I said, it was an easy read because I love reading about these characters. I love reading about Gurney. I love reading about Duncan. Uh, he Heavet, if that's how you spell, pronounce his name. I don't care. But I love hearing about these characters. And, you know, just the, the scheming and the deliberation and what what you know whatever the thought process of these characters they're just written so well that you know again even though and it does set up it does set up by the way I should mention it does set up how House Atreides won the fiefdom to take over Arrakis and how Baron Harkonnen lost it they give the adventure to explain something that does impact the movie so it's ending shortly I would say maybe months before the movie cuz you know, Duke, Duke Leto tells Paul to pack up. We're going to go. The Bene Gesserit are going to give him, they decide to give him a test called the Gom Jabbar, which you saw in the movie. And then uh, the emperor, even though he rewarded House Atreides this fiefdom, he was mad because Le Duke Leto got more praise in the court, the imperial court, than he did. So... He's keeping an avenue open. Maybe Baron Harkonnen will won't be you know will be the new owner again soon because he doesn't like people who can uh, outshine him. It's overall the book trilogy is really good. Now, if I'm new to Dune, should I read this first? No, no. Honestly, you should read it dead last because they make so many connections to all of the other books. You need to save this one, this series for last. And I guess, and rightfully so. Now, what else do Brian Herbert and Kevin Janderson have? I have no earthly idea. They did another Tales short like a year ago, and I didn't find out about it till earlier this year, and I got that one, and it was great too. Uh, seriously, I love the Dune uh, expanded universe, I guess you should say. The books are really good, but how many more can they make? That's my question now. How long do I want this to go on? And I'm thinking if this was the last trilogy, I would be happy with that. 
I, I, for me, I don't think I need any more Dune, but I would gladly reread. I just recently reread all my Dune books again, getting ready for the series. So I'd gladly reread it again if I could. And I'll definitely reread Dune, the entire series, uh, again someday. All right, folks, that's it for now. I'll see you next time on Princes of the Universe.